Okay, it's uh, six o'clock and I'll call the uh, July 2nd, 2019 uh, Planning Commission meeting to order. Would you all please um, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Painter, will you call the roll? Chair Keeney? Present. Vice Chair List? Member Raines? Here. Member Friend? Here. Member Lepper? Here. All right, our next uh, item is to approve the agenda. Are there any, um, that, anything that, that a commissioner would like to pull from the agenda is published? Uh, actually, Madam Chair, I think we consent calendar is the first item on the agenda. <clears throat> Move uh, to approve consent. Good question. This is, I, I see it as a regular I, I meeting. I withdraw my comment. I'm so used to being chair. I know you are. Uh, I'm move honest. approval of the agenda. Second. As presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's quite all right. Uh, let's move on to the consent calendar. Uh, first order there is to adopt uh, the meeting minutes from our June 4th, 2019 meeting. I believe we just approved. By virtue of the fact we approve the agenda as presented. Is that, is that how that works? So if, if staff could uh, just offer an opinion, when we approve the agenda as presented, we did approve the consent calendar since we didn't pull anything off. We didn't pull anything from the agenda. We made no modifications. I was going to go stepwise through <laughs> adopting the min minutes and then. Uh, I should know this by now, but I've forgotten everything I've learned over the past. No, it's my understanding, unless um, uh, Mr. Painter corrects me, um, when you approve the agenda, you're not, you're not modifying the agenda, pulling anything off, or uh, changing the order in which you will consider the items. All right, so move to improve item one consent calendar. 1.1 1 .1 adopt. I'd like to uh, do it Second stepwise. Apology. Okay, uh, do I have a, a motion to adopt the uh, meeting minutes from the June 4th meeting? Certainly. My I have motion a motion is to and a second. The consent calendar as presented, second. which is 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.2. Uh, I was moving to approve both at the same time. I was going to do it stepwise in case there were any comments. I defer on to the, the chair's uh, prerogative. Okay. 1.1. Uh, 1 .1. Move have to a adopt. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> uh, moving on to 1.2 adoption of the Planning Commission bylaw amendments. Uh, Article 5B, as directed by the Commission, last month, June 4th. Is there any discussion uh, on the bylaws? Move to adopt. We have, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. There are no items pulled from the consent calendar. Uh, we'll move on to item number three. Uh, I know some interest to the public, uh, public comment uh, on items not on the agenda. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak to the Commission? on any other topic. Uh, seeing no interest, we'll move on to number four, communications. Mr. Painter, were there any last minute communications to the Planning Commission? No, we have no communications this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, number five, presentation and educational workshop sessions. We have none, so we'll move on to our environmental assessment uh, public hearings. The first item of business is 6.188 Main Street, uh, the fuel for less. We have a request for a master sign plan amendment. Mr. Painter, would you please uh, start with your presentation? Sure. Tonight's request was filed by Michael Ford of All Signs Services on behalf of Abdul Hamid. He's uh, representing the property owner of Fuel for Less LLC. The request involves an amendment to the site plan review 90 08, the master sign plan. This plan was originally approved back in 1990, then subsequently amended in 2010 and 2011. The project site is located in Lower Main Street, area of downtown, where commercial retail, uh, office, and restaurant food services exist. The city general plan and zoning maps show the site designated in zone Central Business District. The master sign plan amendment would add two internally illuminated wall signs sign numbers five and six of the sign plan. Their sign area would increase by 2.22 square feet to the previously authorized 171 square feet of aggregate on-site sign area. 
Business need is the primary reason for the additional signs and sign area, as signs would improve public visibility of the business, along with advertising that a convenience store is present on site. One of the two new signs would be mounted on the west-facing exterior fascia of the pump canopy. This channel lettered sign matches in sign dimension and sign area of two existing pump canopy signs mounted on the east and north pump canopy elevations. The second uh, new channel lettered wall sign would be mounted on the north elevation of the convenience store and have the sign copy stating, stating food mark. Both the number of signs and aggregate sign area exceed those previously authorized by the commission. These, devi de these deviations to the master sign plan require planning commission approval before a construction permit may be issued. Staff's analysis of the request included an environmental review, a review of consistency with applicable general plan goals and policies, site plan review design criteria, and the city's sign regulations. Staff determined that the project's new on-premise signs for an existing facility meet the exemption uh, from the California Environmental Quality Act under Section 15311A of the CEQA guidelines. The gasoline, excuse me, the gasoline station with store is a highway-oriented land use that provides highway travelers and locals alike with fuel and convenient retail services. Visibility of the use is indeed limited for travelers along Highway 50 due to existing trees uh, along uh, Hangtown Creek, as well as other structural improvements. The minimal increase of sign area over the Commission's 2011 authorization of 171 square feet maximum aggregate area appears justified for this business need. The new signs utilize, utilize colors, materials, and finishes that have continuity with the color scheme the business and compatibility with existing permitted and installed signs under city permits. The signs are designed at a scale appropriate for their wall location. The proposed signs are therefore consistent with the site plan review direct, uh, design criteria, the sign regu regulations of city code, as well as goals and policies relative to business identification and visual character within downtown Placerville and the US 50 scenic highway corridor. Staff recommends the commission adopt the staff report as part of the public record, make the finding that the request is exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act, make findings A through D provided on page six of staff's report, and conditionally approve the request for a project known as 88 Main Street, site plan review 90-08-R3, major change, subject to the conditions of approval within attachment one of staff's report. Uh, Michael Ford is in the audience this evening, and uh, that concludes my staff report. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Mr. Painter at this time? I do. Go ahead. Will the logo that says for, fuel for less that is on the east and west sides of the canopy be the same on the north side? Will they use they, the same they, logo? They will be identical, yes. They will be identical. In area, illumination, yes. So as long as the logos are the same all the way around. Okay. And then who's responsible for maintaining that, hang, welcome to Hangtown, the, the grass and the weeds that can be uh, uh, obstructive to, to what's on the, on, on the streets? Uh, I, th I think Is that city, the city or the rotary? Some, some city staff, I think, are... Community um, Services Department serves, they do some maintenance of weeds in that area. Okay, I know Rotary maintains I know it the, too. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. All right, thank you. Sure. Any other questions for staff at this time? Uh, Mr. Ford, would you like to uh, address the commission? I just uh, wanted to point out one thing on the plan. Uh, Mr. Painter brought it up to my attention before the meeting. Um, on our drawings, I think we had item six, uh, or item, we were showing the new sign is on the north elevation. It's actually on the west. So we will correct that when we get to the, the building permit stage. But I just want to, you know, correct any uh, concerns you might have about where that was shown, shown on the plans. But the staff report was correct. Our drawings were incorrect. So other than that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. That was uh, something that kind of puzzled me when I was looking at your yeah. plan, and uh, I was going, well, this, this one's already in yeah, place. It was not know, matching up. Now, <laughs> what am I really supposed to be evaluating? Uh, are there any other questions for the project proponent? 
No, seeing okay. none, thank you thank very you. much. Um, at this time, uh, are there any comments from the public on this uh, project? Okay, seeing none, I am going to uh, close the uh, public uh, portion of this uh, hearing and bring it back to the commissioners for discussion. Uh, any comments on this uh, project? No, I thought it would be helpful for them to get visual you know, recognition from the highway, and I think it's good. Yeah, and I appreciate the clarification um, so that we will have re um, proper revised plans uh, with the building permit at the completion of the project. So at this time, oh, yes, Commissioner Friend. Commissioner Rains, any, any comments? No, I already made them. Thank you. So, uh, again, I want to apologize for my confusion with the agenda approval. I'm surprised I didn't re remember how that process was supposed okay. to happen. It's okay. You're in a different chair tonight. I, I am, and I'm enjoying it. Um, so my, my approach, frankly, and I don't want my comments to be construed as opposition to the project. I'd like to talk about this in a little bit higher level perspective. Um, on one side, I'm not a huge fan of the side or sign ordinance as we have it because I think it's overly restrictive. I've always said that and the fact that we don't enforce all aspects is, I think, to me, testament that we should come back and review it at some point. That being said, a couple of things about this. It's absolutely true what staff states in their report, that there is visibility impairment for this business along Highway 50. That's absolutely clear. Um, so a, a couple of questions I'm just going to throw out to my fellow commissioners to please consider. One, how much additional signage would be appropriate? In other words, what would be the threshold at which we would say, oh, that's too much, even if we accept the premise that the visibility is restricted? Well, how much can you have? Uh, the chiropractor's got a nice, large, giant pole sign. Okay. It's not a highway-oriented business, but it certainly helps their visibility. Also, um, adding this signage, if you can't see the place in the first place, how is this signage necessarily going to assist in meeting the stated objective, which is the basis for the request? And again, please, I'm not speaking against the request. I I'm talking about it at kind of a higher level. Um, is perhaps trimming the trees a better approach. There are a whole number of businesses along that stretch of 50. Some are, might be highway oriented and some not, which are equally impeded. So a, a premise, I, I, mean, I always approach these things, okay, so if I'm going to grant a request for a variance from our existing codes and regulations, I have to, I have to be confident, have comfort that it's going to be applicable to subsequent requests from other applicants that may come before us, right? You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and so I'm I'm really not sure if if this is if this is the best approach. And again, I'm not speaking against the project. I, you know, I I'm not. I'm just wondering: Are there other ways to achieve the objective while staying within the county um, or the city? ordinance, the sign ordinance, or should we be doing some other things? I don't, and I just throw those out uh, for consideration by other commissioners in terms of how I look at this. When you make that turn right there by KFC, you have to slow down. By slowing down, you see the gas station and you would read the white words against the red background that say Food Mart. Then I drove through town and looked at all the gas stations and they all have food mart signs, and they all have signs on all four, three sides of their canopy. So this would just be bringing this edifice up to par with those others and not exceeding. Okay. Well, my understanding is not so much the, the words food mart as is the total signage is being permitted. And I'm also thinking that they actually want to catch people as they're driving between, oh, God, uh, Canal and 49, Highway 49. They can make the turn at 49. Oh, there's the 76, yeah. right? I, and again, I, I don't want to necessarily get too specific nor nor delay the discussion on this. I'm just saying that what, I guess the fundamental question is what are the principles involved here that should be guiding our decision as to whether or not to grant this particular request? And I think there's a number of things that are kind of involved with this particular, um, particular request. So that's all. 
and that may not be helpful and but but it is I think something that we should consider I guess I would just say I looked at the project in the context of the project and could see that they would want to catch that traffic and things like that so of course there's other things that could happen the tree trimming things like that but I think the illuminated sign would really be helpful especially with night travelers offering different places that are open and things um, as far as the larger context I definitely think it's food for thought and things to look at but I guess with regards to this I think it's a, a positive thing uh, mm -hmm. So and I, I didn't ask any questions of the applicant, and I don't know if this goes to applicant or staff, but let's, let's assume that the, the request is granted and the, uh, the additional illuminated sign goes up. Is there going to be, and maybe this is rhetorical, is there going to be an increased visibility from Highway 50 given the conditions as they are right now? Because I don't think you can see the place, frankly, uh, unless you're specifically looking for it. I mean, I drove by a couple of times specifically looking for it. I mean, what are the metrics here, right? And and so I don't know, how, how would we evaluate that? And, and again, I'm not speaking against the project, but let's assume that that illuminated sign is in place as they're requesting. How, how does, the, the, does the applicant know, does staff know that there would be in fact increased visibility? And I'm not challenging staff's argument for why the request is warranted I'm just wondering do we have any metric that says yes that in fact is true if that signage goes up the visibility from highway 50 for the traveling motorist in fact is going to be enhanced and, and it's going to help the business out that's what I'm asking I guess that's specific to this project I don't see that there would be a, a metric outside of um, you know doing some sort of um, study before and after, you know, that would uh, require some money, someone to actually, you know, uh, query uh, consumers. And I also don't think that we should look at it, I, you know, the, the project proponent can only ask for things within their control. You know, they, the, the trees aren't on their property. They could go negotiate with the, the owner of the, that property to say, you know, could you trim the trees? But that's, you know, uh, that is an alternative, certainly, to increasing the signage. Uh, to your first uh, question, you know, what's the maximum that we will allow? I think that's part of our uh, job as commissioners is to look at things in their context, especially when we're retrofitting um, and when you're, uh, it's kind of almost like an infill situation. Look at what's around uh, this site. One thing I noticed is not, uh, although the project proponent mentions um, Highway 50 signage. When you get off of 50 and you're looking down that street, so maybe you saw, you know, fuel for less on 50. You, you turn and it's nighttime. I don't have good night vision. Eh, there's a lot of bright lights. What am I looking for? That uh, that one more sign on the west elevation would help me pick it out from the different vis businesses. And then also the food mart. Uh, you know, okay, we're low on gas. Uh, oh, okay, there's food mart. I can get, you know some snacks, sodas, whatever. So I, I think that is good for their business. And I, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Raines going and kind of comparing this one to the other gas stations in town and saying, you don't think it's out of scope or out of scale with the other ones. I think that's also a good uh, I, I, metric I, I, for I us. I compared them, and they're asking for two items that all the other gas stations already have. So you don't, you don't feel that it's out of line uh, with what's already their competition? No, I don't. In fact, they're kind of taking a chance. They're going to spend money to improve the property in the hopes that it pulls people in, like any other manager in business does. Again, that's uh, yeah, that's the uh, the business owners, um, you know, their perspective and what they're willing to invest in. But certainly, certainly, they could achieve that within the the ordinance limitations of what signage they have, right? Simply by restructuring any signage, they could add the food mart. At the, that's up to them what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I guess what I'm always most concerned about is precedent, okay, and applicability not to this application but to others. And and I am still challenged a little bit by if I can't see the play, if I can't see the forest for the trees, if I can't see the gas station for the trees, putting up another sign, the trees are still there. Do you follow what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. what Again, I get back to the, the challenge as to why the request is being made. And I, and I won't beat this. 
I mean, what was important to me was that the excess was fairly minimal, so it's not like they're asking for a neon, you know, blinking sign that yes. hangs over the freeway. So to me, the the request was really in line with what's already there, what is said at other gas stations. So I don't think that too much precedent would be disturbed in, in approving this one. Good point in terms of how minimal the request. I, I, I forgot to mention that. I, I, I accept that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your perspective, and it is, um, you know, it, we are setting a precedent. It's also very difficult when you are retrofitting an existing site to, you know, uh, improve traffic through there. Um, any other comments? Any other discussion? At this time, I would entertain a motion to take action on uh, this item. I move we accept the proposal as presented. To um, take the recommended action from the staff report? Take a recommended action from the staff report, yes. And there would be no, um, no changes um, to the staff report, the conditions of approval? Except the proposal from the staff report as presented with everything that's listed here with no other changes or additions. We have a second. A second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay. Um, Mr. Painter, would you call the roll? Member Raines. Yes. Chair Keeney. Aye. Member Friend. Aye. Member Lepper. Aye. So the uh, project is approved. Uh, um, you voted against. No, you, I said I. You said I. I, I supported. Okay, I. I supported. I. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, so yeah, it I, is I, a, 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 I, I, a four O. I, I, I. I heard him say I. So, it's okay. Just I'm, I, I, I should have. I apologize for that. Thank you very much for the clarification. But Andrew denied me an abstention. Oh. <laughs> Let's move on to item six point two. This is a uh, seven zero eight Main Street. Uh, Vera Dooley Family Dentistry requests for major change to the approved site plan to allow the addition of an emergency generator, propane tank, and fence screening. Mr. Painter, will you please give your staff report? Yes, attachment two of your staff report contains the applicant's submittal package, and this consists of a project description, site plan, generator specification, and the fence elevations. Uh, the graphic the site plan and the fence elevation uh, are behind you on the wall tonight uh, for your review should you need it uh, yes once again tonight's request is uh, made by Brenton Sanders who's representing the property owner uh, Dr. Vera Dooley the DDS family dentistry located at 708 Main Street they are requesting a major change to a 1988 site plan review I think uh, that actually predates uh, member friends <laughs> One of the very few. <laughs> Position on the Planning Commission. Um, the change involves the addition of, uh, to the exterior landscape, a propane-fueled emergency generator and the propane tank that would serve that generator. The, uh, both uh, the generator and the propane tank are proposed to be screened by wood picket fencing. The, based on the site plan, the 22-kilowatt uh, emergency generator would be installed on a concrete pad within the landscape area along the Turner Street side of this business. This is located at the corner of Turner and Main Street, and uh, that would be west of the dental office. The 250-gallon LPG tank to serve the generator would be on the opposite side of the home in the landscape area east of the dental office. These improvements would be screened, as I mentioned, from public view by a four-foot-high wood, uh, wood picket fencing. Wood pickets would be painted to match the base color of the dental facility. New fencing would match the existing wood picket fencing screening, which screens the uh, air conditioning heating equipment uh, along the west elevation of the dental building. This site is approximately one-fifth of an acre, contains an existing dental office, la site landscaping, and on-site parking with vehicle access from Turner. The office was a former residence that was converted to its current 
business professional use back in 1988 under site plan review 88-11. The site and the immediate surroundings have a land use designation and zoning of commercial. Surrounding the site are a combination of commercial and, and professional office uses uh, to the north and west. There are residential uses located to the south and to the east is the city's police department. The request is before you uh, because new equipment that is visible from the public way changes the site plan and under the site plan review regulations must, must require planning commission approval before the city can issue a building permit for their placement. Staff uh, concluded after its analysis of the request activity that this major change project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act, or what we call CEQA, under Section 15301A. 15301A exempts exterior alteration activities such as electrical conveyances and fencing partitions. Staff also concluded that the major change to the site plan is pertinent to the business professional use on site, therefore is consistent with the commercial land use designation. Staff also concluded that the major change equipment screen fencing along with the proximity of the emergency generator to sensitive receptors such as the residential uh, and professional uses that surround the use. The sound output from the generator off the uh, project site is expected to be at a noise level normally acceptable under the general plan, plan's health and safety section. And that's normally acceptable to residential and business professional uses. Staff also concluded that uh, based on the screen fencing height, that would adequately screen from the public view the generator as well as the propane tank. Also that the proposed fence color would match the color of the dental building. And the use of wood pickets as fence material the major change request is consistent with rele uh, relevant city code site plan review design criteria. Staff this evening is re requesting and recommends the planning, planning Commission conduct a public hearing tonight to receive and consider public input, enter st the staff report into the public record, make findings A through F provided on page 7 of the staff report, and conditionally approve the project known as 708 Main Street, site plan review 88-11R major change subject to the conditions of approval within attachment one or as amended tonight by the Planning Commission. Mr. Sanders, the applicant's representative, is in the audience this evening and that concludes my staff report. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Okay, seeing none. Um, oh, yes, go ahead. So, Andrew, um, uh, in contrasting this staff report with the previous staff report where the um, basis for the request was quite clear, visibility uh, for, from the highway in a highway commercial zone, the basis for this request seems a little bit more obscure, but I think I deduced it on uh, page four of the staff report, kind of in the middle. It talks about the ability of the dental practice to generate electricity during power outages. I'm going to, to presume, and maybe the applicants can speak to this, that this is probably being driven by our new public safety emergency power shutoff that is now state policy for um, California, which we're becoming more and more like a third world country. But um, it would have been nice if, if the specific reason for the request was presented. Th this seemed to be kind of a hanger on, and I, I don't criticize your staff, I generally applaud your staff reports, but I'm, I'm presuming this is the fundamental basis for the request. I, I think that's uh, actually captured in the, By the memo from yeah. Matthew Dooley. Mm -hmm. That was part of it. Oh, I may have missed that, and I, I apologize. I saw them specifically yes, it's. That was provided by the applicant uh, and the property owner. They provided a reason for the generator installation. I, I'm sorry, I didn't see that in my quick review. I apologize. Yeah, here, it's okay. We're here so to... my deduction, though, was reasonably close. Yeah, but your your pre-assumption was, was okay. accurate. <laughs> um, I can tell you from just the counteractivity we've had at City Hall 
there is interest by not only commercial businesses but also residential um, owner property owners to, to come forward and uh, act actually mr. Sanders has uh, been uh, this isn't the only one that he's he's come to talk to the city about so uh, <laughs> uh, it, it is something that certainly is on the minds of, of people and we might get several more some of which may have site plan reviews and we might have those in front of you at some future time but um, yeah. thank you any other questions for staff yes I have well for our staff or the contractor um, right now right now the fence uh, on the tunnel side uh, doesn't quite touch the building but it almost does will the new fence that's going to cover the um, the generator enclose it completely or will it be open on one side Okay. And close the sides visible from Main Street. Got it. And of course, both of these fences will be identical in height, width, and color. Correct. So they correspond. By the way, uh, did you do the fantastic steps on the front of the building that people have been working on the last month? That wasn't me. <laughs> no, they did an excellent job. That really perks up the front of that edifice completely. Are there any other questions for staff? Okay, um, Mr. Sanders, would you like to give a short presentation about uh, your the project? Or um, sure, I mean, oh. to me, it seems pretty cut and dry. We have a dentist office that likes to practice family dentistry and wants to provide services to the residents of Placerville. And under the uh, impending doom of the PG&E shutoffs, if you're having your teeth drilled on and the power goes out. Yeah. Uh, that, that pretty much sums it as up. As long for as me. the Novocaine doesn't wear out, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> so it seems like, you know, we have a reasonable right to expect power, whether we have to provide it or our utility provider provides it. So, I mean, this whole thing, I'd just be happy to go install that generator last week. <laughs> I, know, I think it's a, a very proactive approach, and uh, I, you know, appreciate the the forward thinking. Oh, please. Uh, Step up to the podium if you would, and uh, if you don't mind, step up to the podium and, and give us your name. Um. Yes, I'm uh, Dr. Vera Dulli. I'm the, actually the dentist who is working there. It's just I wanted to mention that a lot of our patients, they drive for one hour, one hour, 20 minutes. They come from Pollock Pines. They come from all over the area, and uh, a lot of them already have generators on their property. And uh, so they really recommend it for us. And it would be very good for them to not drive one hour, 20 minutes, and turn around and go back. I think it would really help a lot of people. Okay. I, I did have uh, one question, uh, as long as you're at the podium, and, and Mr. Sanders, is, uh, may, maybe you could answer this as well. Uh, yes. as, as we've uh, pointed out, the, the reason for your request is these uh, planned or announced power outages uh, from pg &E. And the reason they are doing that is uh, to uh, reduce the risk of igniting a wildfire. And we are in a fire, fi high fire hazard zone. In addition to being on the Planning Commission, I'm also on the Placerville Fire Safe uh, Council. And earlier today, I, I shared email with Mr. Painter about um, reducing the f the fire risk of the project that you have described and uh, specifically uh, we have updated building codes now for for new construction there are, are different building materials and, and mr sanders you're the the uh, contractor for the uh, project correct and so you're you're very i'm sure i hope you're very familiar with oh, yeah. the, the new building codes and requirements to reduce our wildfire risk i haven't failed an inspection in a while Oh, I'm, well, I'm sure you're learning as you go. Um, so given the basis uh, for your request is that, uh, you know, because of the enhanced wildfire risk in the state of California, we are expecting these power outages. And therefore, you know, I think it's very reasonable in, in my mind uh, what you're asking for. What I was going to request of you, even though this is not a brand new construction, is for you to consider using more um, ignition resistant or of 
there are woods that have been uh, pre-treated to make uh, wood that make it uh, more fire retardant. And um, at this, it's uh, something, it's kind of new that, you know, the city, we, we've adopted the building codes, but we're also in the process of uh, considering how we can reduce our wildfire risk as a community and the Fire Safe Council is part of that. Anyway, to make a long story a little bit shorter, I was just going to ask if you, it, it, I don't think it would be too much of a burden as far as expense for you to consider a fire retardant treated wood that could be painted uh, just as you described. Yeah. I think the blending in the picket no, fest. No issue whatsoever. And, um, However, yeah. these Generax are designed and you all listed to be totally, oh man, the engineering that goes into these things is incredible. I think oh, I, the, the, the generator itself I'm not concerned about. It's the fence material, uh, f the screening material. You also have um, some nice uh, trees alongside there. These are things that we're looking at as far as uh, reducing our so wildfire if, if risk. downtown Placerville burns down, you're worried about 10 feet of fence? Well, it, you know, these embers can come in and uh, oh, should yeah. they ignite the fire, uh, the, the fencing material or uh, catch the trees then, then we've got a little bit more of a problem than maybe we didn't have to have. Also uh, on the uh, propane tank side, you're also going to put in the same material to fence that. Correct. So you could my request to you is to make it um, as safe as possible, as far as safe as possible. Most uh, definitely. And so I don't as think... As an electrician, safety is kind of my number one job. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Houses from burning down. And I appreciate you, you allowing me to kind of express, you know, this concern. It, it's new and uh, we're, we're still trying to kind of formulate, I think, as a community, what we can do to uh, improve, you know, our resiliency. So uh, that was my comment, and I appreciate you being receptive to my ideas. No problems here. I'll go and look up fireproof paint. I, I, if, that were, if that were available, I think we'd all be using it. But uh, are there any other questions from the commissioners for the project proponent? Okay, seeing none. Um, we'll go ahead and bring this uh, matter back to the uh, commission for some discussion and possible action. Thank you very much. Okay. Any, any concerns from the commissioners on this project? I'm prepared to make a motion, Madam Chair. Um, I, I am receptive to that idea. I move we approve the requested amendment to 708 Main Street Site Plan Review SPR 88-11. Major change adopting the staff report as part of the public record, including items 1 through 3 as listed on page 7 of the staff report. And the conditions as specified on attachment 1, adding condition 9, consider the use of fire retardant materials and construction. This may be achieved with consultation with uh, planning staff. I'll second. Okay. Great. Any further discussion? All right. Um, Mr. Painter, will you call the roll? Member Reigns? Yes. Chair Keeney? Yes. Member Friend? Yes. Member Lepper? Yes. Wonderful. We have we have another project. Thank you very much for coming out and uh, and hearing us out, watching us <laughs> deliberate on your project. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We look forward to seeing you again, oh, Mr. Sanders. Okay, uh, so that takes care of our public hearings. Uh, we have no continued items and no new business. That moves us uh, to number nine, matters from commissioners and staff. Commissioners, do you have any concerns? Staff, anything you want to bring to our attention? Yes, uh, we will be having, <clears throat> excuse me, we have an agendized and noticed uh, public hearing for the July 16th meeting. Uh, that item, the <coughs> sole public notice or public hearing item will be a formula business request for the 385 Main Street site, which is the former Centro Coffee location. Um, Sourdough and Company is the name of the business. So that will be coming before you on the 16th. Also want to alert you, due to the, to the recent changes to city code as it relates to the AD, ADU regulations, um, I've asked Lynn to prepare some copy swap outs of chapter four of your home reference <laughs> zoning code. Um, the reason it's all done, the entire chapter, it's just we couldn't remember where the page changes were in your copy, so it's just better to give you the whole thing. 
So please pick up one of those on the way out. And um, Vice, Vice Chair uh, List, we will uh, hold on to his until um, he returns. And he is, he's informed us that he will miss the 16th meeting as well. That's all from staff. Madam Chair, through the chair, um, I may have a challenge for the 16th, but I shall endeavor to uh, dismiss that challenge. So I, yeah. I'll know I'll know more early next week, and I can Thank advise you. you. Thank you very much for letting us know. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat for the 16th, but I know that it's important that we have a quorum for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so. more concerned not I know a quorum can pass things but yeah. this is a hot topic so if we're only going to have a quorum it might be better to defer it to the meeting after I, I, the three of us are going to get that sounds like a statement so well, we'll take, it's, we'll a, take it's, a, it's, a, it's a question if there's it's only three of us number one I'm a little reticent, reticent about being the subject and bombardment of <clears throat> Sure, well, a three, three and, if it's can, that, and if it's something that's important, and this is very important, it might have more weight if there's a full commission than just the quorum commission. So if two people can't make it, perhaps we might want to think about rescheduling it. That's where I was going. We can always uh, take yeah, the action to continue it if we feel like well, we can't. Mm -hmm. oh. But we could uh, go ahead and start taking public comment. We would convene our meeting. It has been public publicly posted mm -hmm. rather you, than you, you may have it. three commissioners missing we already know for sure commissioner list is absent I, I won't know until next week if I can rearrange my travel schedule to make and, the meeting uh, and if we can, don't have a quorum present then obviously we wouldn't be able to uh, take action and at that point we wouldn't be taking public comment either. no we could not start okay. even the item other than to announce it then staff then. would declare that I notice an absence of a quorum therefore we couldn't we couldn't do anything we wouldn't even be able to convene no. mm -hmm. right you, you do not have a quorum in which to continue well, the okay. item so it just change. would not be heard yeah. that I've that evening sort of have the plans but I can see. so Commissioner see Leopard it sounds yeah. like we're in the same situation yeah we have other uh, commitments that we'll try to rearrange. So yeah. uh, I, I'll, I, I'll know next week. I don't know. About I can look at that in the next couple of days for okay. sure. Yeah. No, I appreciate you trying to yeah. uh, adjust your schedules, but because this is a, a hot topic. And I absolutely concur. And once he told me what the topic was of the meeting, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens on the, uh, on the 16th. Okay. All right. Thanks for letting us know. Um, so that um, no more no other matters for uh, from the staff for the Commission oh um, go ahead yes Mr. I have Rebus. one quick update on our cannabis applications um, as you recall we reported that we the staff received 13 cannabis applications uh, those applications went through phase one which was a preliminary review for application completeness Phase two was those applications were sent to HDL, our consultant, and they were, did a thorough review of the application and ranked and scored uh, in accordance with a set of criteria. Uh, those applications that receive 80% or greater uh, will move on to phase three. So um, we now are in receipt of, of those scorings. There's a uh, committee that was formed that will review HDL's um, uh, scoring uh, to make sure that the, that the city concurs. And once that process is done, we will then notify those applicants that achieved the 80% or greater and notify those that didn't, uh, but giving the opportunity for those that did uh, to pay then the uh, phase three fee and move on to phase three, which will be then a interview uh, that will be performed uh, by that committee. And then we will also uh, do our own independent scoring of those applications. And then those that receive 80% or greater will move on then to phase four, uh, which will essentially be given to the city manager. City manager will hold a public uh, meeting. It will give um, all property owners within 500 feet of any of the prospective cannabis business locations to uh, give comment on, on the proposal. And it'll be the city manager then uh, who will issue or, or choose, I guess, the top three 
was to then be issued a license uh, to operate a cannabis business operation. And um, if I understood you correctly, so now you are in phase two, H HDL? Uh, HDL is basically is completed, so we're right in between phase two and phase three. So prior to actually fully engaged in phase three, uh, uh, this committee will review the applications and the scoring done by HDL to make sure that there's concurrence. And the reason for this is when HDL uh, first proposed uh, to be our consultant, they were only anticipating about six applications for the city of Placerville based on our size and you know they have a lot of experience with doing this consulting for other jurisdictions and so we received 13 and they weren't really prepared for that so there may have been more than one reviewer and we just want to make sure that you know we that, that we feel that we we agree with how they scored them before proceeding on and and then uh, doing our own scoring and having and conducting the interview do you establish a, a timeline for HDL? Do you <laughs> give them all? The, did you give them the application in say X number of weeks, or uh, or was it kind of it was a bigger workload than they had anticipated? Right. But there uh, was no uh, time time constraints or put on them. We we had estimated originally we're probably going to look at maybe up to two months. It was probably a little mm -hmm. a little bit over that. Okay, and, and so <coughs> at this time uh, you don't have a a timeline for when you'll be through with all four phases we don't we try and get through as quickly as we can but you know we're dealing with uh, different folks that uh, make up the committee with different scheduling so we're trying to get everything scheduled we're having a pre-meeting coming up I think next week where we're gonna start looking at some of those scores and determine whether or not we need to meet again and then from there we'll move forward but we have no set uh, schedule we're basically moving along to be as thorough as we can mm -hmm. thank you the question. I, I, and I have a, I have a question to staff on a completely different topic, but I'll, I'll defer. Andrew raised his hand. Just one question. Did all 13 applicants go to phase two? Um, I can't tell you at this point in time Okay. Wh which ones achieved 80% or greater because staff still has to perform that, that concurrence. Oh, I don't want to know who they are. I just wanted to know whether the number 13 were some, the Some did and some did. Okay. Thank you. And I respect that confidentiality. Getting back to meter, meeting calendar, um, I want to remind you that the first Tuesday in August, the Planning Commission does not meet, national night out. and that's National Night Out. So I don't know if that has any influence on those members who might be absent on that date, but uh, or uh, on the 16th. But I just want you to be aware that we will not hold a meeting on the 6th, so that you all can go out to the neighborhoods and participate in that event which is a fun event around town uh, thank you madam chair uh, Pierre or Andrew we had a, um, a preliminary concept for a boutique hotel in the vicinity of Mosquito Road uh, and the transit station I, I haven't heard anything about that for a long time the uh, city would love to see a boutique hotel that would be built um, on top of a parking garage, but that boutique hotel proposal has evaporated. Okay. All right. Thank you. Unfortunately. Okay. Sorry to hear that. All right. Any other matters? Okay. Move to adjourn. All right. We have a... Uh, I'll second that motion. <laughs> So let's adjourn the meeting. Uh, it's uh, prejudice. Do we have to vote on adjourning? No. Okay, yeah, good. It's, it's, the meeting is now at, I can declare that as chair. Okay, at 649, I'm adjourning well our meeting. Thank you, everyone. Well played, Madam Chair.